back to my Otoshi monologues, my excuse to talk, rant, and embarrass myself in front of all of y'all. No crazy trips or anything this time. I just wanted to take you through a pretty regular week here at school. A lot of eating and some dorm antics. So, let's get started. Remember that omurais from a few weeks ago? Welp, we wanted more. We needed to satisfy our addiction, so we headed over to Musashi Sakai to go find us some omurais. And we found this quaint cafe near the station, and it was totemo kawaii. They strung twinkly lights around their walls, and here we are excited to eat some yum yum food. They had other options on their menu, but we were here for omurais. So, six omurais. Here we go. Ooh, it looks so yummy. And they put a salad with it. Wonderful. I thought it was really good even better than the one from earlier in the trip. And the vinaigrette they put on the salad was also really good. I guess this omurais is just a fancy ketchup-based fried rice with eggs on top, but oh boy, it's magical. Look at us eat. What models we have here. Nom, nom, nom. And of course, dessert. This was some parfait thingy that Bing and Shion got, but they said it tasted really strongly of alcohol. And whether it had alcohol or not, they started acting pretty funny after eating it. Then it was back to school to make some gummy candy. But first, a quick, very special Japanese creatures. We stopped this program to bring you Japanese creatures. Here, we have a Riku caterpillar desperately trying to scoot across the floor. Look at it move forward. And now, watch as it tries to move in reverse. Can't, caterpillars can't go backwards. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. This has been Japanese Creatures. And now, back to gummy making. Remember Poppin' Cookin'? This is another one of those, but this time, it's some gummy making. The package comes with one of 12 different shape cutouts. We got a giraffe, a heart, a flower, and a fish. This set comes with three gummy flavor packs to make red, yellow, and blue. You pour the powder into the water and mix it up. Then you take your three colors and mix them together in different ratios to get a variety of colors. Welcome back to kindergarten, y'all. Red and blue make, wait for it, purple. There's green. And wait for it, oh, we got orange too. But in all seriousness, it was pretty fun to make all these colors. It's a very nice de-stressing activity. And look at this wonderful palette. Then you pour this gigantic thing of white powder into the big container. Then the fun, cool science stuff happens. You stick a mold into your white sand pile, and then you add your different colored juices in a nice design. And then you wait while some chemistry happens, and take out your mold, and pop out your gummy. The closest thing I can compare it to is that fake snow stuff, or the absorbent in diapers, where the liquid is completely soaked up, and the powder sort of expands. But instead of being crumbly, it clumps together, and then poke poke, your gummy comes out. Now enjoy us repeating the process with a lot more gummies. We got this Mr. Fishy going to go swim, 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 and then we got a flower blowing in the wind, wind, wind. Ta-da! Goomies! So pretty. I'm proudest of Mr. Giraffe over there. Gold star for you! And now, a review by Shion. That was good. Really? Was good. What does it taste like? Gummy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shion. The gummies tasted like a soda candy with a slight fruity taste. Much breader than the bread we made earlier, but the texture is still a little funky. It was very... Moist. But it was fun to make. Next up, we have some short snippets of the ICU new student dances put on by some of the other dorms. These people had to wear the same costume to class for like two weeks. And then they had to do this dance on the Bakayama grass area. Big props to these folks. Then, it was off to Japanese economy, where we had a very unexpected guest. I would have made this a Japanese creatures, but I couldn't get close enough to get a solid shot on it. But, here's what happened. All of a sudden, this huge old dragonfly flew right in through our classroom window. And there are a lot of dragonflies around campus, but this one was like twice the size of the regular dragonflies. And it's zooming around the classroom, hitting the walls and the windows, and making the really scary wings hitting the wall noise. You know the That one. Like if you've ever trapped a fly in your curtain and then heard it trying to escape, 
It was like that, but five times louder. After 10 minutes, the dragonfly got tired and perched itself on our classroom light, and while this is happening, the professor just keeps going with his lecture, completely unfazed by this gigantic bug. But then during our break, he tried really hard to send it back out through the window it came from. So that dragonfly learned a lot about Japanese economy that day, while I was 100% distracted and learned nothing. To finish the day, it was off to Kichijoji for some fluffy pancakes. Kichijoji is only two stops away from Musashi Sakai and is rated Tokyo's most livable neighborhood. And it's pretty cute. I could definitely see why it would be nice to live here. You got this outdoor mall area with little alleyways that give you that small town hole in the wall vibe. This city's got everything. They got a good combination of standing street food vendors and actual shopping stores and even have both temples in nature and big city buildings. But today, we were here for some yummy pancakes from Shiawase no Pancake, aka Happy Pancake. It's so pristine in here, everything is so clean, and they have a window for you to watch them make the pancakes too. I got the Kichi Joji exclusive flavor, Raspberry Pistachio that comes with this aesthetic raspberry compote to pour all over your food pillows that are the pancakes. And... Again. And here's a tiramisu coffee pour too. And here we go, time to eat! Yup yup, that's pretty good. For a fluffy pancake it was pretty good, but that raspberry compote was what really made it. The pancakes are more so for the textural experience, and the taste alone isn't that spectacular. It's just a blank canvas for your toppings. The texture is like a bread pudding or souffle, where the pancake has less moisture and is less cooked than normal, but is much less dense because the egg whites are whipped. Patrick's milk tea one was my favorite. The flavor was all throughout the dish, whereas mine, once I ran out of the raspberry sauce, it was only meh. I did get a scoop of fancy fermented Hokkaido butter, but I couldn't taste much of a difference from regular butter. And then, hold up, magic corp corp? What are you doing here? I know there's some Magikarp Taiyaki thing going around Japan right now, but when I filmed this, it wasn't out yet. So, no Magikarp Corp for me. Aww. We stopped this program to bring you Japanese creatures. Look at the beautiful colors of the saltwater fish found in the middle of Kichijoji in front of Don Quixote. And look, a familiar face. Hi Dory, look at this fellow, showing off its lovely zebra stripes. Ah, so serene. This has been Japanese Creatures. Then, we were just wandering around Kichijoji. Ah! Twice! You make me feel special. <laughs> Anywho, then I saw this sign that arguably topped the Twice ad. Kirby pop-up store! And it's September 19th, baby! Rucky! And more magicalness. Kirby, I love you so much. And nice photo spot! Okay, next, Okoyomi na, Okonami. Next, Okoyomi, Okonomiyaki. Next, Okonomiyaki. Oh my god, why can I not say Okonomiyaki? Next, Okonomiyaki time. Take two. This time, the worker mixed everything and formed our food hockey pucks, so we just had to flip it. This time, we have yakisoba okonomiyaki, where there's yakisoba and an egg on the bottom. And whack! Eh, could have been better. And ta-da! Very subpar mayo art. It's a deformed gure tama tama, but it's okay. Time to decorate with some bonito flakes and some aonori, but even if it doesn't look the best, it still tasted really good. And now... Time for tea. Welcome to tea time. This week, Shiba tea. Today, we will be trying this Shiba tea. Upon looking at the ingredients, I think it's pretty similar to the to the panda tea, but I hope it's gonna taste a little different. Today, I will be trying this Shiba tea. Major difference from the other one, even from like 
over here, it really does smell like dong. <laughs> it's got a much more savory scent, even from over here. But allow me to smell it, as always. Allow me to waft the fumes. Okay, bringing it closer, don't smell like dong anymore. A very distinct barley scent. It's got a, like a harsher scent, or there's just more, more smells happening, but I don't think it's a good smell. It smells like you were in ancient Asia in times of war. It smells vaguely of like incense, kind of earthy. I'm getting flashbacks to the Chinese cemetery, kind of like stones. Yeah, something in here also used an incense with the red, be red beans and rice, but like the Japanese style one. There are beans in the ingredients of this, so I guess it's accurate. You can definitely smell those loquat leaves coming through though. I guess I should try it now. Oh, hot, hot, hot. Hotto, hotto, hotto. Uh -huh. Time to taste. The flavor in this tea is rather weak. This is real hot. I'm getting a more savory, savory vibe in this tea. I think it's because there's more beans in it. Mmm. Yeah. Burn tongue. Even with my expertise, when I percolate the flavors of the tea, the only thing that is coming through right now is barley. With a slight taste of the black beans. I feel like this tea doesn't have much flavor. The first ingredient in here is barley. I guess it would explain why it doesn't taste as strong, because I think barley isn't as strong of a flavor in general. It's not as strong as most teas I drink, I drink, I drink, I drunk, English. Examining this tea bag, you can see the various leaves and sticks used to make this tea. You can taste the barley, you can taste the beans, you can even find the chunks of bean used in this tea. What craftsmanship. It's got the smell of Asia. Other than that, meh. Overall, for people that don't like too strong of a tea taste, I think this tea is a good one for you. And this has been Tea Time with a tea, devotee, and little ol' me. This brings me to an end of this Otoshi monologue. If you made it this far, I applaud you. Thanks for sticking around. I hope y'all have slash had a wonderful day, and I'll talk to y'all next time I do something interesting. Mata next time! Of the ICU new stor- new stewardent. Stordent? <laughs> hey, yo, baby!